Nassau, Bahamas. An island that's made up the Bahamas, 700 islands made, made up the Bahamas. Nassau, which is the capital, is where it resides. I came from a family of 16 children. 13 boys, three girls. I told that I was the 13th child. Mother was illiterate, father was illiterate. Mother was a vendor, my father was a janitor. <clears throat> We were a family called the Moxie family. In my country called the Bahamas, you were respected based on the name of your family. We were the Moxies. So the Moxies were nobody. People didn't talk with me. They talked at me. Nothing was ever expected to come out of us. I always knew there was something inside of me. But where do you turn? In a country where it's led by the white man. A friend of mine, a retired teacher, told me one day, she said, Mother, I heard a conversation in Miami Airport. There were two white men speaking. They didn't know she was listening. One of them were, was a black, a white Bahamian, and the other was a white American. The white American asked the black, I, mean, I keep saying black, white Bahamian, tell me, how is it that you have 95% black people in the Bahamas and you're still in power? How did you do it? And he responded by saying, we kept them ignorant. That's how we retain power. Keep them ignorant. While sitting there listening to Chike talk about the films, you see, we will never know about what good we are, what service we are giving back to different countries as a black people, except we see it through the films. We can't understand. You don't know what's going on in the Bahamas. You know what they tell you. The same thing. I know what they say about Africa. I've never been to Africa, but it's never anything good. I'm saying to you tonight, I am so proud to be a part of you because we stand firm for what we believe. As a woman who sat in the seat as Minister of National Security, it was not easy for me. It's a male-dominating arena. And so I must know what I'm doing, but I must stand firm and strong for what I believe. And so tonight, listening to all of these intelligent people in here speak about what it is we want to achieve, we must do it together. We must do it together. And I said yesterday, the boat left Africa years ago, centuries ago, with my ancestors on board. They just happened to drop mine off in the Bahamas and drop yours off in America, but there is no difference. 
JK, what you have done for me tonight is something that's brand new. Because I never have a dream of this organization until you told me about it. Let me say to you tonight, believe in yourself. It's not about the outside of me. It's not where I live. It's what's inside of me. You might see me as a black woman. You might see me as a poor woman. But inside of me, it's saying that you are somebody. You don't let them. Listen, prove them wrong. Whenever they say that. You just prove them wrong. All right. God had given me an opportunity to go to college. When I got there, they said, Mother Pratt, we want you to come in as our volleyball coach, but you'll be a full time student. I was married with a house full of children five boys, one girl. My husband said to me, take the opportunity, simply. I said, I don't know, because I'm not certain whether I would be gaining on one end, losing on the other. But he said, you go, and I will take care of the children. I want you to have it tonight. In 1981, I left home to go to college, 34 years of age. Sitting in classrooms with children, 17, 18 year olds. But I was given a budget of $60,000 a year to recruit. What I did, each year I went back home and I recruited Bahamians. And I brought them in droves. Hundreds up there I brought. Some nights it was only God and me on I-95. <laughs> driving them to college in North Carolina. One way, 13 hours. Mm. Then we'd enroll them, take them down to Kmart. Get them sorted out for school. Some of them didn't even have clothes to wear. Went about getting what they needed. And I would leave and return home, not looking for anything in return. Today, hundreds of Bahamians are doctors, lawyers, engineers, police officers, defense officers. They're all people of God who open the door for me to go in. Hallelujah. I'm saying to you tonight. There must be a reason for your living. If you haven't touched your life, you have not achieved anything. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can show somebody where he's going wrong, then my living will not be in vain. That's right. And so I'm saying to you tonight, wonderful people, Somebody is hoping that you'll see what's happening to their world. That's what I always felt. I say, God, can't they see that I need help? I know I have a brain. I'm just poor. All I need is an opportunity. That's all I need. That opportunity came. And there might be some that you know when they're giving up hope. You'll never amount to anything. That's what they say. But I proved them wrong. Amen. I just proved them wrong. The day I was elected to Parliament, I stood there as the poor woman out of the heart of the inner city. And I told them, I am just as good as you are. 
You live in the suburbs. I live in the inner city. But it's not about where I live. It's about what's inside of me. And 